Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about photons. Now the first question that might occur to you is what is a photon? Up till now we've been looking at light or electromagnetic radiation as a wave and we've been modeling it as a wave and it's been it's had wave-like properties but sometimes um, we need to look at light in a different way and it was Einstein that first realized this. This is Einstein over here on the right and while he was looking at some work by this guy over here, whose name is Max Planck, he realized that um, sometimes, and in particular in the experiment that Planck was looking at, you can't really model light as a wave. You have to model it as a little packet or lots and lots of little individual packets of radiation leaving a surface of, of whatever object you're talking about. In Planck's case, an object called a black body. Um, and if you do this, things start to fit into place. Uh, now this was an extremely new idea and it overturned a lot of um, previous work and a lot of previous thought and the whole, the whole thinking about light in fact. Now Einstein called these little particles or these packets of electromagnetic energy, he called them quanta, which is the plural of quantum. And this is where the word quantum mechanics came from. Later on they were renamed photons, but Einstein's original um, name for them was quanta of electromagnetic energy. And he said that the energy, in fact it was Planck that said that the energy of this, these photons were proportional to their frequency. So if you, if you had a uh, light of a higher frequency, then each of these quanta or these packets of that light would have higher energy individually. And the whole point is these things are discrete, they, they, they are self-contained. Okay, so that's a photon. It's a slightly odd concept. Um, so, you know, why do we need it? Why can't we just model light in one single way as a wave? Well, sometimes that's not possible. Uh, and some results, you know, suggest that we need to model light as photons or individual particles rather than waves. Uh, and one such experiment is called the photoelectric effect, which we will deal with um, in another video and in, in another lesson. Um, if you charge a piece of metal up uh, negatively, so you add electrons to it, which are delocalized, they're floating around inside the metal, and then you shine light of sufficiently high frequency, let's say ultraviolet light, onto the surface of this metal, some of the electrons will become um, ejected, and the charge that you put on it will disappear. Uh, that can't be modeled um, as when you look at light as a wave. You have to model light as a particle. And so one of these quanta, one of these packets or photons of electromagnetic energy will interact with each electron and, and that energy will be taken up by the electron and the electron will leave the surface because of the extra energy that it's been given. So that's an example of how, or, or a situation where we need to use the photon model, we need to use the particle model of light to describe what's going on. The photons are a little bit hard to visualize, so here's a little... Uh, animation from uh, FET, which I'm going to just just show you in a minute. Um, so let's get this running. So here we've got individual particles, little packets, which are shown as little purple dots that are streaming away from the light, billions and billions of them every second. If we change the frequency or the wavelength of the light, we can see that each individual photon is changing its color because the color of the photon is related to its wavelength. And if we reduce the intensity of the light, we can see that all we're doing there is reducing the number of photons that are being emitted by the light every second. Okay, so that's kind of a visualization of, of how you can see photons, uh, you know, um, coming away from a light. Now, one of the important equations in quantum mechanics and in this topic is uh, with is for the energy of a photon, and this is Planck's equation, and he said that the energy of the photon, which is this E over here, so that's energy. Of, the, of each individual photon is equal to a constant which is h which is now called Planck's constant Planck's constant multiplied by f which is the frequency of the photon all right so the energy is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency and uh, our Planck's constant is a very very small number it's this number here 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds is an extremely small number uh, and gives you a bit of an idea about the fact that the energy of each individual photon is also going to be very small indeed. Okay, so E equals HF, one of the main 
equations in quantum mechanics. Now it can be expressed in a different way and because we have the wave equation for light which is c, speed of light is equal to frequency times wavelength, um, we can see that the frequency is equal to c divided by lambda and we can replace the f in equals hf with c over lambda to give us e equals hc over lambda. So h is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light and lambda is now the wavelength of the light or the wavelength of the photon. So let's have a little go using that. Um, it's a really easy equation to use. So what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the energy of the photon where it has a frequency of 4 times 10 to the 15 hertz. So it's quite easy. The energy is equal to Planck's constant which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. We multiply that by the frequency which is 4 times 10 to the 15 and if you do that, you get a number 2.7 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Now you can see that the energies are really tiny and they do fall into this sort of 10 to the 18, 10, 10, to, the 9, 10 to the minus 18, 10 to the minus 19 type range of, of energies um, in joules. And in another video, we'll have a look at a different unit, the electron volt, which is a much better unit to, to measure photon energies with. Okay, so here we have two lights um, and they have a different colour. Now um, let's take this, this one over here, this blue one for a minute. Let's say it's a 40 watt light. Now each individual uh, photon has let's say an energy EPH. Now if we don't change the colour, we're not changing the photon energy because the frequency is not changing if the colour stays the same and therefore the energy of each individual photon will not change. So if we then increase the power of the light, we make it brighter, um, increase the intensity. Let's say we double that to 80 watts. The individual photon energy will not change and therefore twice the number of photons are going to be emitted from the lamp every second. All right, so if you double, or rather, let's just generalize, if you increase the power or the intensity of the light, then you will increase the number of photons being emitted per second, but you won't change the energy of each individual one because you haven't changed the frequency and the energy is proportional to the frequency. Okay, so now we've got two lights and we're going to say that one of them is blue, all right, and emits blue light and one of them is red. And they're going to have the same power, all right, the same intensity. Let's say they're 100 watt each. And the question is, which one of them will release more photons per second? And which one will release fewer. Okay so we know that this is um, a higher frequency over here because it's blue and over here we've got a lower frequency light which is red. So if you've got a lower frequency light then the photon energy itself is also going to be lower. So each photon, each little packet of energy streaming away from this light is going to be lower, is going to have a lower energy for the red light as it is for the uh, blue light. So over here we've got a higher photon energy. So, but if they've both got the total, the same total amount of energy per second, then obviously the red one is going to be emitting more photons per second because the total energy here per second um, is the same as this one, all right? And yet the each photon takes up a smaller proportion of that because it has a lower energy individually and therefore you're going to have more photons per second in the red light and you're going to have fewer photons per second in the blue light. All right, so that's that. And obviously if you double the frequency uh, for the same total energy, you're going to have double the number of photons. Okay, putting that mathematically, we can see that the total power of the light is equal to the photon energy multiplied by the number of photons emitted per second. So if you have a lower photon energy, such as in the red light, keeping this one the same, you're going to have more photons emitted per second. All right, and that's it. Thanks for listening.